So today I'm going to teach you how to play any major or minor chord you might come across. Uh, but there's a couple of things you need to know before starting this lesson. Uh, we're going to be using bar chords, okay? Uh, the four basic bar chord shapes. So the major on the E string, the minor, and the major on the A string, and the minor on the A string. If you don't know those, I do have a lesson on my channel, uh, which will run you through all that. And I'll put a link for it in the description. Uh, the other thing you'll need to know is your note names on the low E string and the A string. Okay, again, I have a lesson for this, uh, which will be in the description box or whatever it's called. Uh, so, something that happens quite often, which I find interesting, is a student will show up and they've played guitar for a little bit. It will be a new student for me, but they have a bit of experience. And I'll say, well, have you played bar chords before? And they go, yeah, yeah, I've played this one. And I go, well, what chord is that? And they say, it's G. It's a G chord. And then I say, well, why is that a G chord? And oftentimes they don't know. They just got taught that if they put their fingers in this exact spot on the guitar, it's a G chord. But there's so much more you can do with these chord shapes. So, and, and as well as that, they often know the names of the notes on their strings. And they just need to connect those two, connect the dots, and then the world's their oyster they have access to so many more chords than they might have had previously so the way bar chords work if we take this major shape for example the reason why this is a G major bar chord is because this note here on the E string which we built it from is a G and this chord shape is the major I hold my guitar up like this is the major bar chord shape right now if I said to the same student, play me a B flat major, they would have no idea how to do this. But it's as simple as, first of all, step one, they have to find a B flat note on the E string. So if this is G, this is G sharp, A, A sharp, or B flat, same thing. And then they just have to play that same chord shape starting on that B flat note. And now it is a B flat major. Or if they wanted to play F sharp major, step one, find the F sharp note, E, F, F sharp. Then play that major shape built from that root note or F sharp note. Right, so those are the two steps to playing a bar chord. It really is that simple. You first find the root note of the chord and then you play the chord shape that's dictated by the tonality of the chord and the tonality just being whether it's a major or minor. So sticking to the E string, we have our two shapes. We have our major bar chord shape, minor bar chord shape. Okay, if I said to play B minor, step one is find a B note on that E string, right? Which if you know, if you know these well, you'll know it's on the seventh fret. Okay, so I found my B note. Then I said minor, which will dictate the shape you play, which in this case will be the minor bar chord shape. So this would be B minor. If I wanted to play B major, I just put that middle finger down. Now it's B major. All right, don't get confused by this. A lot of people think that if I say B minor, they find a B note and then they go one down. They confuse uh, flat or B flat versus minor. Okay, totally different things. So again, B minor would just be a B note on the E string, then the minor bar chord shape. Then if you put your middle finger down, it'll be B major. Okay, try another one. If I said D minor, okay, step one, find a D note on the E string which is on the 10th fret, All right? And then it was a minor chord, so I play the minor bar chord shape. This is a D minor chord. And again, if I wanted it to be major, I'd put my middle finger down, right? And then this would be D major. Cool? Now, you might be wondering why you would play these chords. So for example, if I played a G major, you'll notice it sounds the same as a normal G chord. Right, G major, G major. These are called different voicings of the same chords. So they actually contain the exact same notes. Like, actually, if I show you my tuner, if I play a normal G chord, you'll notice we have a G note, a B note, a D note, another G note, another B note, and another, why is that saying C? There we go, G. All right, another G note. So the only three notes in the G major chord are G, B, and D. Now, if I play this G major bar chord, you'll notice we have a G, we have a D, we have a G, we have a B, we have a D, 
and another G, right? They're the exact same notes, G, B, and Ds, just stacked differently and played in different orders. Or same thing with an A chord. So I played a, a normal A chord, you have an A, you have an E, you have an A, you have a C sharp, and you have an E. Or if I played an A chord, uh, a major bar chord, again, this is an A note, so I'm playing the major bar chord shape. I have an A, E, A, C sharp, E, and A, right? All the exact same notes, just in a different place on the guitar. Um, I'm not going to go into chord theory this lesson, but that's basically how chords work. As long as you have the three notes that belong to it, you can play it anywhere on the guitar. Like this would be an A chord, this would be an A chord. 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 Right? So same chord, just in different places on the guitar. This is how Jimi Hendrix gets his sound, you know? He'll play like, say, hey, Joe. Right? He'll play C. This is the fundamental G. D. A. E. But he won't play them like that. He'll play those chords on different places on the guitar. So for C, he'll go like this. G, D, A, E. All right, you get the idea. <laughs> well, I hope you do. I hope this hasn't confused you. So let's keep going with this. So again, the two steps to finding a chord is find the root note then play the chord dictated by the tonality. Now, everything we talked about on the E string applies to the A string as well. So, except different shapes. If I wanted to play a C major bar chord, I find my C on the A string, which will be the third fret. And then I would play the major bar chord shape, right? Which could either be like that or like that, right? Uh, it depends how you play it, right? So this would be a C major. If I wanted to play D major, I find a D note on the A string, then I play the major shape. If I wanted to play that as D minor, then I'll just play the minor bar chord shape for the A string. Right? If I wanted to play F sharp major on the A string, F sharp ninth fret, major. If I wanted to play F sharp minor, right, play the minor bar chord shape. Cool? So that's how you play any chord. All right now you'll never be stuck okay if you just remember find the root note and play the chord shape that is dictated by the tonality right whether it be major or minor okay cool so hopefully that's making sense and i haven't gone off in too many tangents and made the video too long because i know everyone's attention span is like 13 seconds these days so i'm try I try to be brief but i also i also want to actually teach you something Okay, I don't want you to just click on a video and then it's some guy who shows you one thing for 30 seconds and you still don't know what you're doing and click on the next video. Uh, it's just a, it's a vicious cycle. So, as always, I've given you the information, but what's most important is that you actually know how to practice this efficiently. Okay, because if you stop now, it'll just be in one ear and out the other. Okay, you won't retain it. So, what we're going to do is go on to YouTube. Okay, and what I've got here... I've got a few backing tracks loaded up and I'll put links for all of these in the description so you can play along. So this first one, Blue Bossa. Now, this will look confusing to you at first because there's all these chord symbols like M7, M6, a circle with a freaking line in that. What's that? Okay, again, jazz place. What are you guys up to? It's a half diminished, but don't worry about it. Um, the way you're going to navigate through this is everything that has a lowercase m you're going to play as a minor chord so in the case of this ah let me just one step back up one step you're going to play all of these on the e string for now okay okay so first we have a c m7 okay so for here we're going to play c minor so again c right minor then that percentage sign means you play it again right then f m right so we're going to play minor so i find f Play F minor, F minor. Right, now for the weird ones with the circle in it, just play the root note for now, okay? Just to get your way through. So we'll just play a D note by itself. Right, then G7. Okay, this is going to be a major chord. Again, anything that doesn't have an M is going to be a major chord. Okay, so we're going to play G major. Then we're going to play C minor. 
right, C minor again, then E flat minor, so E flat, right, minor, then A flat 7, so this will be a major, because it doesn't have the M, then D flat triangle, I mean, geez, what is this, what is this language, so we find D flat, right, it's major 7 by the way, um, D flat, and then we play major, right, then we do that again, percentage sign, now again we have the half diminished chord which we're just going to play a D note for now. Okay, then G major, then C minor, so C minor, and then again just a D note and then a G major. Right, now you'll have to take this slowly at first obviously, just work your way through, but once you can do that, play along with it. And I think I've got this slowed down to 75%, so use that playback speed which if you don't know, Click on this here, playback speed, okay, this, and you can also go custom, which is good, because you can do increments of 0.5, alright, but we'll go 0.75, alright, so, I'll play along, if you want, play along too, but here we go, 1, 2, 3, 4, C minor, C minor again, F minor, F minor, just a D note, G major, C minor, C minor again, E flat minor, A flat major, D flat major, D flat major, then D, G major, C minor, now here we do two and one, so we go D, two, G, four, then it repeats, right, so Hopefully you were able to play along with that. If you weren't, uh, just first go through and make sure you're familiar with the root notes. So just go C, C, F, F, D, right? Just figure out the root notes and then you can worry about adding the chords in later, okay? So once you get the hang of that on the E string, it's the exact same process on the A string, okay? So we're going to play the same chart, but now using the notes on the A string. Okay, here we go. One, two, C minor, C minor again, with the minor chord shape, F minor, again, now just a D note, G major, which is the 10th fret, major bar chord, then C minor, C minor again, E flat minor, A flat major, all the way up here, D flat major, all right, D flat major again, just a D note, now G major, C minor, then D, G major, and then you go around again. Right? Cool. So, once you can play, I hope this is all clicking. Um, once you can play through this chord chart on the E string and the A string, okay, actually, we'll do a couple more things first. So, I've got like a few other ones up here. Okay, I've got Autumn Leaves. Again, you're just going to come across the same kind of chord diagrams, but I'll put, it, put all these uh, links in the description for these backing tracks. So just have, your, have a go at playing through these, just one string at a time. But once you can do that, this is where it gets realistic, okay, and more what you would do in an actual musical setting. We want to combine, we want to combine both our chord shapes on the E string and the A string, okay? The reason is, if you don't know already, the relationship between the E and the A string is 5 frets. What I mean by that is if I played a B note or the 7th fret on the E string, okay, I can play that exact same B note 5 frets back, so the 2nd fret, 7 minus 5, 2, come on guys, all right, uh, on the A string, 2nd fret on the A string, all right, exact same note. Okay, if I played the 5th fret on the A string, right, we invert it, so we plus 5, same note is 5 frets away, or 5 frets up on the E string, right, both D notes. Okay, the reason why this is useful is it means we don't have to shift all the way up and down the fretboard to play these chord progressions. Okay, we can have a more even tonality when we're playing them. So instead of going C minor, for example with this chord chart, C minor up here, and then all the way down to F, Right, I could play that C minor here on the A string and then go to that F there. 
Right then, instead of going all the way up to D here, I could go from that F to this D here. Right? And then instead of going to a G on the A string all the way up here, I could go to that G here. Alright? Then that C here. Right? So much more efficient. But you have to be very, you have to be pretty in touch with your uh, notes on the E and the A string to pull this off, especially if you're doing it on the fly, reading charts. So again, a good way to practice this would be just start with the root notes, right? So maybe just start with the C note on the A string here and just play F. Okay, don't worry about adding the chord shapes yet. All right, D, G, C. Right now, how do you know if you're doing this right or wrong? Well, because the relationship between the strings is five frets difference, you should, in theory, never have to move more than five frets to play the next chord, okay? Because that note will be available more locally on the fretboard, right? So if I have the C, right? If I'm like, oh, well, I know F is up here on the eighth fret of the A string. Well, that's quite a big distance, okay? It's five frets, so I know it'll probably be closer if I just play it on the E string here, right? Instead of this, go an octave down, right? Or a D note, okay, so I'm on D here on the fifth fret. I should know that I don't have to go all the way up to 10, okay? Because again, that's a big jump, five frets. I can just play a G here on the E string, okay? It's closer. Um, now, there will be exceptions to this if it's intentional. So, for example, if I'm playing, what's an example in this chart? Uh, basically, there'll be some some instances where, say I'm playing an F here and want to go to a B flat. Instead of going to a B flat here, I might just want to kind of recenter and play the B flat all the way up here. But the bottom line is you want it to be intentional. You don't want to do that because like, well, I, well, I don't know where a B flat is on the A string, okay? Um, you want to do it because it, it's, again, intentional, not to repeat myself, but it's important. Cool. So, and again, you would apply this through all the backing tracks that I put in the description, um, but you can do it with any backing tracks, okay, as long as there's a chord chart along with it, so you know what to follow. Well, this has been a lot of information, so let, let's just summarize. So, first of all, we went over how bar chords actually work, so again, find the root note first, and then apply the chord shape that uh, goes with the tonality you've been given. So if it was B flat minor, step one, find the root note, B flat, right? And then play the minor bar chord shape, cool? And this applies to the E and A string, cool? Then the next step was bring up one of these backing tracks and play all the chords just on either the E string or, well, first on the E string, right? And the ones with the lowercase m are minor, everything else is major, and the weird ones just play the root notes. And the weird ones, I mean the circles with the line in them, just play root notes, and then do the same thing with the A string, right? Then once you can do that, and you're familiar with it, try combine both, okay? So combining both your chord shapes on the A string and the E string, trying to play it as fluently and locally as possible. But I hope this was all helpful. Hope you got something out of this and I'm sure there will be questions because I covered a lot. So don't be afraid to leave those in the description and I'll try answer them to the best of my ability. But thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.